Hello and welcome back to our fourth episode of Fan Factory Friday Season 3 and I have to say that today we've got an absolute gem full of incredible sci-fi inspired architecture by Requiem Sama. This build totals 362 hours in game and has been featured several times in Coffee Stain's weekly dev livestreams. Before we get into the weekly showcase though, remember that you can download this save yourself, available through the link in our article on satisfactorytips.com. The link is in the description below and I highly recommend checking this one out. Starting off, we find ourselves in the underground cavern, where resources are stored along with easy access to the MAM, workbench, workshop and shop. Now I love the underground feel here to this secret little lair hidden beneath the, um, the hub. But emerge and you'll see a whole new world before you, and this really is a world that I would recommend exploring yourself, as I've already mentioned. This world is called the Moroscape, and it's dedicated to the minimalistic composer Michael Nyman. The beauty of this world is in the extensive network of skyward reaching buildings and the pride and joy of Requiem Sama's build is the double helix which you may have previously seen on reddit. A lot of the architecture is incredibly detailed and for those of you who are wondering how the curved edges are so clean throughout this build, while well, these have been done with the help of error actions mods or possibly on satisfactory calculator and Requiem's talent with them really does show off throughout the whole of this, this showcase. In the center of the base you can see the helix and it really is the jewel of the build. But it's not just an architectural wonder, it is the distributing center of the factory, similar to the train nexus that I'm currently constructing in my let's plays. I love the way Requiem Sama has built the helix, unfortunately we can't go too close to the helix because of the strain on my PC, but look at how the helix is blended together with the use of foundations, walls and pipes. I must admit I'm rather amazed at the quality of it, and if you're looking to build a helix or double helix, do check out Satisfactory Tips guides because BrainDG has covered this. And in doing so, you can make all your friends stand in awe at your amazing structures. And I mean, look at it. It looks just as good on the inside. And if we get a little perspective, you'll see the huge amount of work that's gone into this actually bleeds out into the train station distribution center. With all of these jaw dropping rail designs, this whole thing has been really well executed. At the train station, resources are fed and removed from the station by running along the underbelly of this radial design. My only concern here for Requiem Sama is that in the future updates, we may have collision implemented. It's something that's been talked about a lot recently. And if so, it would be a shame to see all of this work halted due to how signaling, if it comes in, is implemented. You can also find plenty of really cool designs throughout this factory, such as the circular coal power stations dotted around the estuary. This reminds me a lot of my circular power tower, which you may have seen previously, and below the tower top you'll actually find the water extractors encased bringing the water um, up into the coal power plants. It's a lot of work to pull off, but it really does look great. I should also mention that as this is a factory that is work in progress and by no means finished, do bear in mind that parts will have walls and roofs missing. That being said, there is one downside to this massive save and that's due to its sheer size and the amount of things going on. It can actually make it quite difficult to know where everything is. It's not so difficult if you've had several hundred hours in the save, but at first it can be a little overwhelming. Running away from the helix, we have the various outer line factories. Obviously, these are accessed by the massive rail networks, and even out here, there is more experimenting going on. There is no one way in which items are manufactured here, whether that's tight compacted factories or much more spread out running a vertically tiered system. There's plenty of experimenting going on. When it comes to power in this save, there is a total of 18,000 megawatts being produced. Now this may sound like a lot, but it really is absolutely dwarfed by the maximum consumption of over 38,000 megawatts. Before we check out the current setup though, I wanted to show off the nuclear setup, which 
as of yet is not running, but takes another helix approach with power plants running up the helix and the fuel produced underneath. And the fuel for these nuclear power plants are going to be produced under the train station at the top of the build. Of course, all the water is brought up from the bottom water farm and under this you'll actually find a little secret. That being said, moving away from the future of power in this save, we'll look at the current power generation. And here we'll arrive in the northern oil fields. Once again, Requiem Sama demonstrates their joy of experimentation. And arriving at the train station, we have several buildings dedicated to oil refinement and power generation. Resin is used to produce plastics for the factories, with the heavy oil residue being combined with compacted coal to produce turbo heavy fuel, which is then sent to a two-tiered fuel generator building. I love the use of tunnels from the half pipes to run the fuel along, as well as the compacted coal setup. I must admit, I love the combination of the glass walls and foundations, along with the sloped roof. For the compacted coal line resources, these are brought in from the local areas by train. This is of course by no means complete, but for the time being produces the required energy to keep this build running. The last thing I want to cover before my computer burns out is another factory over in the rocky desert, nicknamed the Aluminum Opera. Now it has some incredible architecture and there are no points given to those who can guess correctly why it's called this. Inside this, we have the aluminium processing area. Now, I love the addition of lights for each section and how spaced out everything is. The attention to detail is stunning, especially outside, but this has been noticeable throughout. And I'm really excited to see where Requiem Sama takes this build next, providing, of course, that my PC can handle it. Now, if you think your PC can handle it, do check out the save on satisfactorytips.com but that's all we have time for in this video. If you did enjoy it, please do drop a thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe. But until next time, thank you so much for watching. And thank you to our amazing supporters who make this possible. Notably, our Solar Eclipse patrons, The Calamity and Cerebral Tag, as well as our Lunar Eclipse patrons, Chris McCabe and Lord of July, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, Kareev Johnny. Anyway, guys, until next time, as always... Ciao for now.